Philip Bromwell has been taken on a rare escorted visit to the so-called Roof of the World. The morning mist lingers over Lhasa. In Tibetan, the city of the gods. Pilgrims and tourists climb the steps of the Patala Palace. This was once the residence of the Dalai Lama, but you'll see no pictures of him here. The spiritual leader of Tibetan Buddhists fled the region in 1959 after a failed uprising against Chinese rule. It's the Chinese flag which flies over this sacred site. Chinese officials who've brought us here. Our hosts have arranged an interview with one of the monks at Jokang Temple. I ask if he believes the Dalai Lama will ever return to Tibet. But another question goes unanswered. Why do you think that some Tibetans protest against... Protest against Chinese? Sorry. Uh, let's just finish your question. Uh, <laughs> this is a difficult question for me. Since 2009, 133 Tibetans have set themselves on fire in protest against Beijing's rule, which activists say tramples on religious freedom and culture. China rejects such criticism. But security is tight here, and with cameras apparently disguised as prayer wheels, it's far from subtle. The message our Chinese hosts want to convey is rather obvious too. At the College of Tibetan Medicine, Tibetan students take classes in the Tibetan language. Through an interpreter, one of the lecturers describes the changes which have taken place here. Tibet has received support from the government and has been well developed and grows very rapidly. Lhasa is certainly a sprawling modern city. We are shown businesses making traditional Tibetan crafts. The manager here says business has never been better thanks to government support. In Tibet, no one wants to gamble with doing anything but towing the party line. A carefully choreographed trip like this is perhaps only ever going to reveal one version of events. But even inside Tibet, it seems a true picture of what life is really like here remains out of reach.